We'll make Wilder a new belt. The Instagram champion. <laughs> I saw Eddie Hearn say this on, I think he was on Instagram himself. He was on some type of social media and he had a live stream going. And yeah, he came out and he was saying that Deontay Wilder should be the Instagram champion. Let me quote him here directly. He said, Anthony Joshua has got four world championship belts. Well, he's got three really. Nobody counts the IBO. He's got four world championship belts. Deontay Wilder has got one. We're going to make him a new belt. It's called the Instagram world champion. Now we get to see the truth. They seem so devastated about not getting the Anthony Joshua fight and that we definitely don't want the fight. The contract is still live. It's still valid. It's sitting on your manager's desk. Apparently, you only had two minor comments that you couldn't even send us. So send them now. We'll sign the contract and we will sign the contract before your ink is dry. So stop fooling the fans and ask the fans and the media to put pressure on Deontay Wilder because if you really want this fight, it is still there. Sign it. April 13th at Wembley Stadium, Deontay Wilder can give the fans what they want. So don't worry about us. Certainly don't worry about Anthony Joshua. He will fight any man. So those are the words of Fast Car Eddie Hearn. <laughs> Calling Wilder the Instagram champion. Now, a lot of people over the years have expressed their dislike for Deontay Wilder because of the stuff he says on Instagram. And Wilder comes across to me as corny when he does all his trash talk. But personally, I like it. Yeah, I like trash talk in general. And Wilder is this kind of uncouth hillbilly. <laughs> you know, that, that's how he talks and that's how his personality and demeanor is. He's this country bumpkin hillbilly type character who you can imagine on a farm somewhere wearing dungarees with a straw hat wrestling pigs. <laughs> that's how he talks. That's how he acts. He's, he's uncouth. He's a little unsophisticated in his approach and even his trash talk comes across as just awkward and corny. But as somebody who grew up a fan of WWF and later WWE wrestling, I think there's room for characters like Deontay Wilder. There's a room for the country bumpkin fighter. Yeah? It, it, it's a character. I find it entertaining. I find it cool. But a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people find his sense of... His, let, me, let me rephrase what I was going to say. A lot of people find Deontay Wilder's constant self-aggrandizement probably butchered the way you're supposed to pronounce that word self aggrandizement is probably a better way to pronounce it a lot of people don't like that from Deontay Wilder he's always bigging himself up he's always making himself out to be this incredible champion you know saying that he would have knocked out Mike Tyson and all this type of stuff when he's only beaten two opponents with a pulse in his whole career but yet he's making himself out to be an all-time great a lot of fans don't like that and me personally I do think that's disrespectful when he's talking about Mike Tyson and all these other fighters and acting like he's better than they are, I find that disrespectful, you know, not disrespectful to me, but disrespectful to fighters who achieved a hell of a lot more than Wilder did and fighters who are not as protected as Wilder has been because Wilder has been very protected throughout his career. It's only now that his team seem ready to actually put him in with people who are even mildly threatening to him, you know. Luis Ortiz was a dangerous fight, yes. And how many years of being a champion did it take before Wilder's team were willing to put him in with Ortiz? And Ortiz, by the way, <laughs> there's been a lot of speculation about his age. Nobody really believes he's only 39, all right? But there are two people now who have come out, two boxing insiders who have come out and said Luis Ortiz is actually 48. One of them is Amir Mansour, all right? Now, Amir Mansour, I don't know him personally, I've seen a lot of his fights, obviously. I've seen a lot of his interviews. And he's always, to me, come across as a stand-up guy. I mean, this was a guy who said that in his prime, there was only two fighters he avoided. And one of them was Ike Bayabuchi. And Monsoor, you know, for, for people who care about the streets and all that type of stuff and think that that really means something, Monsoor was a street guy. He's a guy who did hard time in prison. He's a guy who was one of the tough guys in prison, fighting people in prison. This is, uh, as Americans say, uh, 
a certified or a thorough guy, Amir Monsoor. And this guy's telling you that Luis Ortiz is 48 years old. And Monsoor himself is in his 40s. So he knows something about people who are in the same kind of age group as himself. And the other person saying that Monsoor is 48 years old was a matchmaker who recently did an, an interview with Ingram Jones on his YouTube channel. And this matchmaker who's made many matches, world title fights and all that kind of business, I forget the guy's name, he has also said that Luis Ortiz is 48 years old. And he also said that Rigando is, I think, 43? Now, I've said that for a long time as well, that Rigando is older than his stated age. Because Rigando is supposed to be like 37, 38. He don't look like a 37 or 38 year old to me. <laughs> that face looks way older than that. So, regardless, uh, if Luis Ortiz really is 48, that puts in pers into perspective Deontay Wilder's victory over him. But at the same time, you have to give Luis Ortiz a massive amount of credit if he really is nearly 50. Because to even get into the position to be fighting a Deontay Wilder and to have beaten the fringe contenders that he has beaten, uh, Luis Ortiz, at that age, that takes some doing. <laughs> that takes some doing if he's really that old, you know. And same for Rigando. If Rigando's really like 43, then to have achieved what he's achieved at his age is fantastic, you know. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Um, Deontay Wilder, the Instagram champion, he likes the mouth off on social media all the time. and may He's a very emotional guy, Deontay Wilder, you know, very, very emotional guy. And as I've said before, people who are emotional, it's difficult for them to think logically. It's difficult for them to think straight. Because all you need to do is trigger their emotions and they're just in a cloud of rage or in a cloud of emotion, whatever other type of emotion. They're not thinking straight. They're not thinking rationally. And that is a strength and a weakness with Deontay Wilder because certainly outside the ring, I think it's a weakness for Wilder uh, in terms of at the negotiating table and all that type of business. I think it's a weakness because he can be manipulated because he's so emotional, you know. Um, but in the ring... Again, it's a gift and a curse because I've spoken before about the fact that Deontay Wilder has this tremendous adrenaline burst that he conjures up out of nowhere. It's almost like a turbo boost for a car. You know, a car that's got a turbo button that you press and you get this extra boost of acceleration. Deontay Wilder's got that too in a boxing ring. He's just got this burst of adrenaline that comes out of nowhere and he goes ham on his opponents when he gets this burst of adrenaline. And even though he's only a 220 pound man, I mean, he was 215 against Ortiz, I think, but normally he's around 220. Even though he's only 220 pounds, when he gets that burst of adrenaline, he's incredibly strong. You go look at when he got the burst of adrenaline against Ortiz, a guy who's like 235, 240, he was throwing Ortiz around like a rag doll. Same thing with Gerald Washington. He was throwing Washington around like a ragdoll when he got the burst of adrenaline, and that's another 240-pound man. So, yeah, people say that Wilder can't be that strong at 220. He's very strong once he gets that adrenaline boost, and usually he gets the adrenaline boost after he's hit you with a good shot. And that's part of his makeup. Is he's, he's, he's this emotional guy who feels emotions very intensely. So when he gets... Angry, he's extremely angry. You know, when he gets happy, he's extremely happy. He's, he's a guy of extremes, Deontay Wilder. And again, that's a gift and a curse. But certainly when it comes to his social media and all the stuff he says on there, the self-aggrandizement, making himself out to be an all-time great, it, it rubs people up the wrong way. And, and I've got no problem with fighters saying those kind of things as long as they're willing to back it up, as long as they're willing to fight anybody. If you're willing to fight anybody and you're calling yourself the best of all time or better than... Well, he's not calling himself the best of all time, but he's saying that he would have knocked out a prime Tyson and all this kind of stuff. Well, if you're doing that, then you won't have any problem fighting anybody. Yeah? And remember, Deontay Wilder has turned down fights with people like Dylan White, for example. Yeah? He turned that fight down several times and there was millions on the table for him to fight Dylan White. So, yeah. Anyway... Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. 
It's happening them out.